Welcome back everybody to A-Level Chemistry. Today we will be doing Group 2 and Group 17. So let's get started. Let's look at some common trends for both groups. The atomic radii, down the group, the number of electron shells increases and thus the atomic radii increases. So that's a basic understanding. And this one nano will, give, will get you the marks in exams. However, just check with your um, examiner guidelines and the feedback that your teachers are given. Ionization energy, down the group, the number of electron shells increase, thus the shielding effect increases. The distance between the nucleus and the valence electrons also increase. This is because of the atomic radii increasing. You may not have to mention this in your exam, but that's the reasoning. Uh, these two effects combined overcome the increasing nuclear charge and the energy required to remove the ele valence electron um, decreases down the group. Sorry, so... Uh, it's a bit jumbled up, but these two effects, which is shielding and the atomic radii increases, overcome the increasing nuclear charge because down the group, the number of protons will increase, thus the attraction increases. However, because these two uh, because of shielding and the increasing distance, this effect doesn't, it's overcome, it overcomes this effect. And thus the energy required to remove the valence electron decreases down the group. All right, group two elements, they are called S block elements because their valence electrons are usually found in the S orbital and they're found on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Um, they're also known as alkaline earth metals because they form alkalis when added to water. That means it, that, means that they form OH minus ions or hydroxide ions. They are silver or grayish and their compounds are white solids. Remember, these are group two elements and not transition elements, so they will not form colored compounds. Combustion of group two metals. The general equation is metal will burn in half oxygen or half a mole of oxygen to form metal oxide. M referring to the, M refers to the metal, and that's the general formula that you require. Remember, the product is a solid, and it's a, and it's a white solid because it's not a transition element. Uh, we have to know the flame colors for examinations. Magnesium burns with a bright white flame. Calcium burns with a brick red flame. Strontium burns with a crimson red flame and barium burns with the apple green flame. So um, uh, in, your, in your exams, you can phrase your answer as such. A silver metal burns with, if it's magnesium, it could be bright white flame to produce a white solid. Reactions with water. Like I said, uh, group two elements are alkalis. So we will see them react with water to produce hydroxides, metal hydroxides and hydrogen gas. This is a general equation. One, metal, one, one mole of metal will react with two moles of water to produce one mole of metal hydroxide, OH2, because it's a group two metal, and, uh, and hydrogen gas will be produced, one mole of hydrogen gas. So what's the observation? So since hydrogen gas is produced, effervescence will be seen or bubbling, but effervescence is the correct key term if I'm not wrong. But you can also state disappearance of gray solid um, because the metal will be used up. However, the, another, another observation could be formation of white precipitate. However, the solubility of metal hydroxides, hydroxides increase down the group. So um, magnesium, for example, may form a white PPT. However, calcium, strontium, or barium may not. So uh, I think these two observations are the best if you would like to write in your answer. Do not really uh, write white precipitate if you're not sure. This, uh, okay. Uh, since the solubility increases, they get more alkaline down the group uh, because the dissociation to produce OH minus ions or hydroxide ions increases. Um, one metal hydroxide will dissociate to form uh, M metal 2 plus ion or calcium 2 plus or strontium 2 plus ion and two hydroxide ions. Sorry, this is a typo over here. Because it gets more alkaline down the group, that must mean that the OH minus ions increase, not decrease. Oh yeah, uh, sorry. Like I said, white PPT produced when magnesium reacts with water, the amount of precipitate produced decreases from calcium, strontium, and barium. The rate of reaction also increases down the group because the ions are more readily formed. Why is that? Because the ionization energy decreases. Thus, more effervescence would be produced, would be observed in the same amount of time. Uh, basically, since the ionization energy decreases, ions are formed more readily, and um, at the, in the same time, more OH my more hydroxides are produced, metal hydroxides are produced, and thus more hydrogen gas is seen. All group two metals will, will react with steam to produce metal oxide instead of metal hydroxide. So just take note of that. 
solubility of other group two compounds. Okay, solubility of sulfates decreases down the group. So a quick way of remembering is just remember metal sul uh, barium sulfate, and it's a common insoluble salt that we all know, and magnesium hydroxide is partially soluble. So you just remember these two elements and you can compare the gradient yourself. If you just look at a periodic table, if you see barium sulfate is, if you know, if, if you know barium sulfate is insoluble, you just work up with your finger or like up the periodic table and you see magnesium sulfate will probably be soluble because it's opposite. And since metal magnesium hydroxide is partially soluble, that must mean that barium hydroxide is very soluble. So that's a, a quick way to remember that. Remember that group two carbonates are insoluble. However, they will react with water to produce carbonate salt, carbon dioxide, and water. Thermal decomposition of nitrates and carbonates. All right, the, the temperature required for thermal decomposition increases down the group. The thermal stability, or you can also, it's also known, you can also say thermal stability increases down the group. This is due to the electron cloud of inside the anion being altered by the cation. This weakens other bonds in the compound, causing it to decompose more easily. This is an A2 topic, but this explanation helped me a bit when I was, when I was preparing for my examinations. And it's quite an intuitive way to think about it. If you, because the, because the cloud, electron cloud of the anion is being altered and the bonds are weakening, that must mean that the temperature required will decrease. So the electron cloud is altered more by magnesium as compared to barium. If this is confusing, you, you can just ignore it, but just remember that the temperature required for thermal decomposition increases down the group. And this is the general formula for decomposition. A one metal carbonate will produce one mole of carbon dioxide and one metal oxide. The observation is metal solid, oh sorry, white solid and gas produced, which is carbon dioxide, which can be tested with lime water too. And the, and the positive test for that would be white precipitate is formed. Um, I mean, metal, metal carbonate will be a white solid as well, and so will metal oxide. So if, if a better answer might just be saying gas produced uh, produces white precipitate when tested with lime water. All right, decomposition of nitrates. Two moles of metal nitrate will decompose to produce two moles of metal oxide, four moles of nitrogen dioxide, and one mole of oxygen. This is a general formula. And the observation is brown gas is produced for NO2 and white solid is produced for magnesium oxide. Uses of group two compounds. So group two compounds have a giant ionic lattice arrangement. They're held together by strong electrostatic forces of attraction between oppositely charged ions. Basically, it's an ionic bond. They have metallic, they have high melting and boiling point. Um, so this, because of that, they use to line furnaces because of high melting and boiling point. Um, basically, due to the high temperatures in the furnace, the other compounds and other other substances won't be damaged because the make, because the lining by the compounds will protect them. Hydroxides like calcium and magnesium hydroxides are weak bases because they don't fully dissociate. So that's the explanation for this, and they can be used to treat acidity in soil and also act as an antacid. Calcium compounds, calcium oxide is used to make cement, and calcium carbonate is used in extra extraction of iron. However, I think this point here, you, you, you can just avoid that for now. If you, if, unless you want to add it, there's no, no real need to know about this, but the rest all are pretty important. You could just take note of these two. These two are the most common answers. Now let's move to group 17. They're also known as halogens. They are colored. Uh, fluorine is uh, pale yellow. Chlorine is greenish yellow. Bromine is reddish brown or orangish. You can write either. Iodine is a black solid, purple, sorry, purple vapor. It can also exist as the purple black solution. So just remember these colors. Melting and boiling points. The melting and boiling point increases down the group because the number of electrons in the, in the molecule, sorry, increases on the group. Thus the strength of Van der Waals forces of attraction between compounds increases. Thus more energy is required to break this bond and the melting and boiling point increases. A van der Waals forces is proportional to the number of electrons. As the number of electrons increase, the, or the van der Waals forces of attraction between molecules, remember it's between molecules, increases, plus more energy is required. So that's why fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine is a liquid, and iodine is a solid. So one trend is that the color intensity increases down the group. It gets from, um, it gets from lighter to darker colors, and it goes from a gaseous state to solid state. Okay, exam-based question analysis. So let's say they give you a compound, which is iodine chloride, for example, and they ask you to pre 
predict its states. So we know that chlorine molecule has 34 electrons. Bromine molecule has 70 electrons. Iodine compound, sorry, iodine chloride compound has 53 electrons from one, uh, one atom of iodine and 17 electrons from one atom of chlorine. So all in all, they have a total of 70 electrons. Thus, iodine chlor chloride will likely, will likely, you can't state it, but it will be, sorry, it might be, a it's a typo over here. So in your answer, you should write, iodine chloride will probably be in liquid state at room temperature and pressure as the van der Waals forces are proportional to the number of electrons. Iodine chloride has the same number of electrons as bromine, 70 electrons. Thus, it has strong enough forces which enable it to be a liquid, but not strong enough to be a solid. Okay, chemical properties. A quick exam tip. Uh, you'll usually, for AS levels, you'll usually require to only know metals and halogens, metals as in group two metals. So remember that metals are reducing, thus halogens have to be oxidizing, or you can remember the other, other way around. If you remember halogens are oxidizing, the metals are probably going to be reducing. All right. Halogens accept electrons to, to reach noble gas configuration. They accept electrons, thus they're oxidizing agents. Agents. Down the group, the distance from the nucleus increases and the attraction from the nucleus decreases. Thus, halogens, are, halogens get less willing to accept electrons and thus their oxidizing power decreases down the group. Basically, as the distance from the nucleus increases, the attraction by the nucleus on an external electron will decrease, hence it has less likelihood of accepting the electron and thus it becomes has a lower oxidizing power. Halides, on the other hand, become stronger reducing agents down the group because the valence electron in the ion is further away and they're much easily lost. Halogens are usually chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Halides is a name given to ions of halogens. Iodide, for example, bromide, for example, and chloride. Remember, the ending ends in ide. So chloride, bromide, and iodide. Reactions of halides. We know about, I'm sure everyone knows about the displacement reaction. The more reactive halide will, re, will displace the less reactive halide from its compound. It'll also react with hydrogen. And this is the general equation for it, where X rep represents a halogen. It can be chlorine, fluorine, bromine. So hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen will react with one molecule of um, fluorine, chlorine, or bromine. So to produce hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, or just a halogen halide. Um, fluorine reacts explosively in dark and cool conditions. Chlorine reacts explosively when exposed to UV light. And bromine reacts slowly when heated. Iodine, on the other hand, forms an equilibrium mixture, which, uh, which is set up upon heating. Um, these, these conditions aren't really tested for A levels, ES levels. I haven't seen them, but it's good to know that. It's good to know these. It might be, it might come out for future papers. Hydrogen halides decompose upon heating, at least not, at least some of them. Hydrogen and hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride do not decompose upon heating due to strong bonds between hydrogen and the halide. Hydrogen bromide decomposes slightly and produces a brown gas, which is bromine. Hydrogen iodide decomposes fully to give a purple gas, which is iodine vapor. The bond energy gets weaker as the bond length between hydrogen and bromine or iodine increases, and less energy is required to overcome the bond and decompose the compound. Basically, from fluorine to iodine, the size of the anion increases, the distance between hydrogen nucleus and the iodine nucleus increases, thus the, because it's a covalent bond, right? Uh, it's, a, it's attraction between the nucleus and the shared pair of electrons. If the distance between the nucleus and the shared pair of electrons increases, the bond will get weaker. That's why the bond energy gets weaker as the bond length increases. That's all you need to mention in your exam. But don't confuse bond energy and van der Waals forces. Bond energy is required to break bonds within the molecule, while van der Waals is the bonds that are between the molecule. Now let's see what's the tests for hydrogen. So you're, let's say you have uh, chlorine, bromine, and iodine and you don't know what they are. They are in. They are apart from the colors. I mean, apart apart from the fact that you can um, see their colors. Let's say you dissolve them in an organic solvent. How do you test for that? So, because it will be colorless in that case, and you have three vials of chlorine, bromine, and iodine, but you don't know which is which. So, if you add silver nitrate, a white precipitate. If a white precipitate, if a white precipitate is seen, it's probably going to be a chloride or chlorine is going to be present. Um, 
A silver nitrate is added to a bromine, a cream precipitate will be seen. If it's added to iodine, a pale yellow precipitate will be seen. Upon adding dilute NH3, aqueous, which is dilute ammonia, aqueous ammonia to the, to the pre precipitate, if dilute uh, aqueous ammonia is added to the chlorine precipitate, the precipitate will dissolve. Even, even if concentrated aqueous ammonia is added, the white precipitate will dissolve again. For bromine, however, the cream precipitate will be partially soluble, or you can also say insoluble, when dilute ammonia is acid, aqueous ammonia is added. However, upon adding concentrated aqueous ammonia, the, the cream precipitate will dissolve. Iodine, on the other hand, is insoluble in dilute aqueous ammonia or concentrated aqueous ammonia. The insoluble, the precipitate will remain. So your observation for testing would be the presence and color of precipitate. So you must say that upon adding silver nitrate, a white precipitate is formed. Upon adding dilute ammonia, aqueous ammonia, the precipitate dissolves, hence it's chlorine. Or it could be a pale yellow precipitate is formed when silver nitrate is added and does not dissolve upon adding dilute ammonia, dilute aqueous ammonia or concentrated aqueous ammonia, hence it's iodine. Okay, reduction, reducing strength of halides. As we discussed that the strength of, the reducing strength of halides decreases, increases down the group. So when you react NaCl and H2SO4, you'll get NaHSO4 um, or and also get hydrogen chloride gas. So this is uh, uh, basically a displacement reaction. Um, and the observation is white fumes, which is produced by HCl gas. Next up, when bromine reacts with it or sodium bromide, it can also be potassium bromide or reacts with H2SO4 will produce NaHSO4 and HBr. Sorry, this is a typo. It's supposed to be HBr, hydrogen bromide. Um, the observation is a reddish brown gas and steamy fumes because uh, the reaction with bromine doesn't stop here like how it stops in, with chlorine where it stops at HCl and only substitution has taken place. However, HBr that is produced over here will further reduce H2SO4 to sulfur dioxide. And that's why you get reddish brown gas and steamy fumes. So a, a quick way to remember the, how to form the equation. So from H2SO4 to SO2, the oxidation state has decreased from plus six to plus four. So there's a difference of two, hence there's only, there's hence two HBr is required. Um, so two, and that's a quick way to remember it. Um, okay, for iodine, reaction with, of iodine with, is similar to NaCl. The first step is the same for all three of them. and It'll produce hydrogen iodide and NaHSO4. However, iodine can further reduce H2SO4 in three things. First being sulfur dioxide, sulfur, or hydrogen sulfide. Uh, iodine produce, the observations of iodine vapors produced for all three of them. So it'll be purple vapor produced. A yellow solid would be produced for sulfur and a pungent gas Pungent smelling gas will be produced for H2S, which is hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide. Um, you can write any of these three reactions for your examinations. And like I said, for, uh, for bromine, a quick way to remember the, the number of molecules is sulfur decreases from plus six to plus four. So you need two, hyd two hydrogen iodide. It decreases from plus six to zero. So there's six change of six oxidation states. So there'll be six HI from H2SO4 to hydrogen sulfide. This goes from plus, plus six, sorry, plus six to, uh, to minus two over here. Hence, there's a change of eight oxidation states. So there'll be H, eight HI will be required. For the reactions of chlorine. So chlorine undergoes disproportionation, which is basically when the product has two different oxidation states. Um, so chlorine will react with water to produce HCl, which is minus one where Cl has a minus one oxidation state and chloric acid, which has a, where Cl has a plus one oxidation state. And the conditions for this is cold water. So you need to remember these reactions and all of them, uh, just memorize them, they're not that hard. And try to use the trick that I taught you over here. It'll make it a bit, bit more easy. Um, further disproportionation reactions are when they react with uh, alkali or NaOH. When it's cold at 15 degrees Celsius roughly, uh, will undergo this reaction where NaOH, two NaOH will react with chlorine to produce NaCl and NaClO. This is also known as a chlorate salt, chlorate salt, sorry, and H2S and water. Um, similar to what I said, there's a change by, by two. So that'll be, that's a two NaOH is required. Um, 
next condition is hot concentrated alkali at 70 degrees Celsius. So this is a general equation that you need to know. 6NaOH will react with 3Cl2 to produce 5NaCl and 1NaClO3 and three water molecules. Again, the oxidation state for chlorine here is plus five and minus one. So that's why you need five NaCl for one NaClO3 that's produced. And then from this, you can form the rest of the equation. So remember the ratio is five is to one and one is to one over here. Uses of group 17 elements. Fluorine and chlorine are used to make chlorofluorocarbons. Um, that's a part of organic chemistry. Uh, they are, it also uh, used, fluorine is also used to make polytetrafluoroethylene, which is PTFE for short, which produces, which provides a non-stick coating in pots and pans. We can also state that fluoride is used in toothpaste. Bromine and iodine are used in manufacturing photographic film and dyes. Chlorine is used in bleaches and to make PVC, which is poly, polyvinyl chloride. Uh, and, what, and chlorine is also used in water purification which is the disproportionation of chlorine, which kills bacteria. This reaction, uh, you don't need to know exactly why it kills bacteria, but you can just say that it's used in water purification where disproportionation of chlorine when added to water kills bacteria, making it safe to drink. Okay, we have come to the end of this video. Please share and like this video if you found this useful. It's supposed to be a short revision guide for A2, sorry, AS levels. And please share your opinions and suggestions in the comment section. I'd love to hear them and we like to help you out as much as, as much as I like. And if you have any suggestions regarding what you want us to do or what chapters you want us to do, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll try my best to record them as soon as possible. Thank you and have a nice day.